Hello, everyone. This is Crystal uh, with Open to Public HVAC School, and today we're going to talk about float switches. Um, basically, how to find out if you're tripping a float switch and the float switch is doing its job, or if potentially your float switch is bad. The most common one I notice is the outside unit is short cycling. Uh, that's just a fancy way of saying it keeps coming on and uh, then shutting off prematurely. As in, say your indoor temperature isn't reaching what you want it to and your unit just keeps shutting off. Maybe even running as little as 5-10 minutes before again shutting off and then sporadically coming back on again. Just stating the obvious here, um, your float switch is only going to trip in your cooling cycle. So this is only going to happen uh, when you've turned your thermostat to cool. So while short cycling often indicates that it has something to do with your drain line and tripping a float switch, it does not mean it's always your float switch. Short cycling can happen for a number of reasons, but we'll get to that in another video. For now, let's just focus on float switch. So for right now, and you can look in here and see, uh, it's really nice to have these sort because you can see right through here whether it's backed up or not. Uh, and it's going to be coming off of uh, the auxiliary drain on your primary pan not the one that's your emergency, but your primary. Now yours might be all white with a red cap that has the elbow, or it might be in line on the PVC like this one. Um, how can we check once we get to the float switch really quickly, whether it's bad or good? Well, just like many things, it's important to check the continuity on your float switches, just like you're checking continuity on your contactor, so on and so forth. Uh, if there is no continuity when you put your leads one on each wire, then you know it's bad. Unless, of course, your float switch is tripped and you have to reset it. Now, once you know that you're having to reset that, obviously, and it's not wet here, then you're probably on to the right diagnosis if the float switch is bad. Um, not always the case, but in this instance, if you know you haven't had to reset it um, and it's still not reading continuity, it's in the proper place, you know it's the float switch. Easy peasy. So again, we're gonna take these two wires that are in your unit. We're gonna put one lead here and one lead here. If you hear that beep, it means you have great continuity, you know, as long as it's under one ohm and something else is going on here. Okay, so here we are out here in the warehouse and this setup is for something called a slab coil. Um, when you are installing a drain pan float switch, which in my opinion, and in some places it's code, it's a good idea to put both a primary float switch and a secondary drain pan float switch if you're up in the attic. So this is a simple drain pan float switch that most people use when they're using a secondary. And the most important thing when you're installing it, say as a installer or a homeowner, is it needs to be on the side that's going to be serviced. So for example, where the drain line's going to come out, you would wanna put it on that section. Um, most units, this is a slab coil setup, so it's different. Most units, that, that port for your drain line is gonna be on the long side. And when you're installing it, just make sure the side that has your fitting is going to be the side that you attach your emergency float switch. These little guys right here are super simple. Uh, they're gonna tie in on your 24 volt line and many of them actually have an instruction manual on how to use them. As far as just putting them on your drain pan here, 
Again, make sure it's on the serviceable side that the technician can get to it if need be. This is your float, and it's just a simple float device that's going to cut the uh, 24 volt to your AC outside so that the air conditioning doesn't continue to run and overflow into your home. So you can see it's just a real simple clip style. You're going to clip onto your pan. Just make sure that it is you know, snug here around the edges and it's gonna have these catches. Uh, this is gonna be connected up to that low voltage side. And this is facing this way because as the water rises, it's going to push that up to disconnect the 24 volts. Uh, we'll show you here in a moment what I mean by uh, breaking the 24 volts here outside. Um, but for now, that would be one version you would see. Uh, a more fancier version that most installers don't use because they're a little more pricey and most guys, they're going to try to cut their costs as much as possible. You would see something like this. And uh, like we were mentioning earlier, uh, this actually has an LED in it when it is tripped. And it's going to glow a pretty bright red you're going to be able to tell right away that it has tripped. And you can kind of make out right here that diode and your LED here up top. If I can get it to focus a little bit here. There we go. Um, that's our LED that's going to warn you that, hey, it's tripped. Again, I like these see-through because you can see for yourself when that backup is there. And these are just like the other ones. They're gonna tie in on your 24 volt line there. And they're gonna clip on to the side with this more fancy looking guy here. So again, you're gonna put the side with the flotation um, on the correct side. And then you're gonna be able to screw this in to hold it in place. And what's also great about these sort is it actually gives you instructions here, which uh, is fantastic. So you can see exactly how it should be sitting in your pan. A lot of emergency drain pan float switches now have it to where it'll give you a QR code or you know a website or something you can go to with detailed instructions so they don't have to print it all on this paper. So just to review here, when we talk about, you know, after we have installed and we've got our thumb clamp here to tighten, um, we've installed it correctly, we know it's correct, or say you were tripping a float switch before and you've replaced it. Um, once you put that in there and replaced it with this tie, obviously it's got a test button here, you can check it and make sure it's functioning like it should. But a big indicator is if, you see when you come up to your unit to check, because now we know, right, that it could be the float switch that's causing short cycling outside, or it is actually doing its job, and your drain, your emergency drain pan is filling up and cutting the circuit. Um, if you go to your unit and you're noticing that it's dry like this, I mean bone dry, there's no wetness, no water, because you've immediately gone up there to check and make sure that you aren't retaining some sort of water, and it is indeed tripped. If you move that or move it up and everything kicks back on again, you know that your float switch has issues. Um, now what I don't like is when someone talks about just jump around the float switch and see if it works. Well, if you jump around the float switch before you go through this step of diagnostic, of course it's going to work because you've, you've basically wire nutted around your safety device. So make sure that you have reset it. And if you plug it in and everything's still not coming on, even after you've reset the power. Now, remember, there are some units that have soft lockouts in place where you have to actually reset the power. I've come, come across a few Daikin units that are like that. Uh, make sure you reset the power and make sure that everything's connected. You're getting continuity between your two wires here and everything seems good. So 
If you do, in fact, turn it back on, you know there's no water, it's reset, but it's still not coming on and your power is reset, then you know that your float switch is, in fact, bad. In which case, that does kind of, you know, get around having to jump around the float switch if you know you move it and there's no water and everything comes on. And uh, especially if you're not getting continuity here between your two uh, wires, it, it's a pretty good indication it's bad. You're not needing to jump around your flotation. Um, usually I would do that if, say, it is actually, you know, it has good continuity here. But when you connect it or you've reset it, this one doesn't have a reset. It's just a simple one. But if you have um, done all of that and you know you have continuity, but then you connect it and it's still not coming on and you bypass that and everything all of a sudden comes on, then that's when you're going to apply bypassing your safety switch. And at that point, you know it's a malfunction. Okay, we're at a gas unit here and our PVC drain line is coming off of our evaporator coil here. You can see we've got our vent comes before our heat trap. And since this is a closet unit, it's going to go down like that into the line. When, and this is probably the one you're used to versus the other that I was showing you earlier with the clear. This is one of the more common ones here plugged in. Um, that should be installed on the connection that is higher, if you can tell from this angle, but the screw-in connection that's higher on the coil than the lower one, which is going to be your primary drain. Um, when we're venting the way we are, that vent needs to be taller than the connections that are coming out of the coil. So just make sure that you have it screwed into the correct location on the evaporator coil when you install it. Your two wires are going to come off here and tie into your 24 volt line, which I'll show you where that is in just a moment. Okay, now when we're following our 24 volts from the float switch, whether it's the one off the primary like this one, or off of your drain pan, uh, if you are in a horizontal application, this is an upflow in a closet. Um, and this one's going to come all the way down. So we're going to follow our wires and they're going to come into the unit here through the hole, bundle of wires, track it all the way through our secondary hole here. And you can see our thermostat wires. And now this isn't a gas application, so we're going to have a control board. Now you can either tie it in on your R or Y. Uh, in this instance, you can see the one leg from the float switch on the R on our control board. And then through our thermostat wire here, you can see where the second leg ties in to the wire nut with the R or red wire going back to our thermostat. So it's designed to cut the cooling or the power to the um, cooling cycle. That way the AC will not continue to run and overflow. Always make sure when you remove your wires, take pictures of where they're going and make sure your power is cut to the unit. Make sure your power is turned off before you remove any wires, especially if you think you might want to remove them completely to check the continuity. So in this case, what we would do is we'd remove one, one from this wire nut bundle here and the other one from your R on your board. And you're going to put one lead on each of the exposed wire and make sure that there is, in fact, 
continuity. Uh, next time we do the video, um, what I'll go ahead and cover is how to install your drain line here. And this is a gas application, like we mentioned a moment ago, um, learning how to properly drain your unit to where it's not going to cause issues with your float switch or condensation issues. Uh, or, you know, that could be why you are tripping a float switch is it is not properly vented or uh, the right amount of tilt in order to get the water out or push the water out, depending on whether your unit is under positive or negative pressure. So we'll do that in this uh, next video, and I will talk about how you want to properly vent and install your drain line. So I hope this has been helpful to all of you. If there's anything I missed or if you have any questions or concerns, just leave them in the comments below and I will get to them as soon as possible. Thank you so much for joining me this week at Open to Public HVAC School. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and a great beginning to your summer.